Hi folks, it's me, your Diversity Dude. It has been a little while since I've recorded one of these, but there is so much going on uh, in the diversity and inclusion space that I think you're going to hear a lot more from me, whether you like it or not. Anyway, I thought I'd start today uh, because I got a headline popped up on my phone from the Globe and Mail, and it reads, Advisory Group's Economic Blueprint for Dramatic Increase in Immigration, Foreign Investment, and infrastructure bank. So our finance minister here in Canada, Bill Morneau, uh, struck a panel of advisors from across the country with the purpose of making recommendations of things that the Canadian government could do to uh, significantly stimulate and grow the economy. One of the recommendations that jumps off the page to me is the recommendation of increasing immigration rates from its current 250,000 immigrants per year to a whopping 450,000 immigrants into Canada every year. Now, let's be clear, I am pro-immigrant. I believe very strongly that Canada is a country that is uh, built on immigrants. If we exclude our Indigenous and First Nations peoples, we are all immigrants. Whether you're someone like me, who's been in this country, my family, for eight generations, or someone who arrived today, we're all from away, as they say. <clears throat> so I'm a big proponent of how uh, immigrants can positively impact a country like Canada. What I'm not a supporter of is not making sure that we are supporting those immigrants in finding work in their chosen profession. For those of you out there who believe that uh, the stories are actually myths, those being MBAs driving cabs and PhDs cleaning offices. I can tell you from my own personal experience that it's not a myth, it's a reality. I'm married to an immigrant and my own husband faced challenges in finding a job. Uh, he uh, regularly heard the sentence, well, he doesn't have any Canadian experience. And this is from somebody who was born and raised in the United States who is Caucasian, who has English as a first language. So take all the racism out of it and you've got a significant barrier for a very, very skilled newcomer to Canada. So if we're going to increase our immigration rates at all, uh, let alone keep them where they are, we need to do a significantly better job of making sure that they can find those jobs in their chosen profession. That means credential recognition. That means education recognition. That means educating Canadian employers on the value that a newcomer can bring to the employment environment in Canada. The second piece that I want to comment on is something that is not in the recommendations, and that is taking advantage of the talent that is already here. And specifically, I'm speaking about two of the most underemployed and unemployed groups in Canada, those being the Aboriginal and Indigenous peoples and people with disabilities. The rates of unemployment for those two groups are extensively higher than their non-Aboriginal and able-bodied colleagues, uh, where the uh, unemployment rate hovers about six to seven percent nationally. For both of those groups, it's over 15 percent. The rates of underemployment are staggering. The reality is that we've got a whole group of people here in Canada that want to work. They're eager to be part of the fabric of this country, but there are barriers in their way to getting that employment. Speaking just about people with disabilities, as an example, I've been uh, working here in, in Calgary for the past few months um, looking to open an office. CCDI is opening an office here uh, next month. I can tell you that in trying to find an office that is barrier free, a standard which we live and die by, uh, I cannot tell you the number of landlords who either didn't know if their building was barrier free or simply didn't care. Uh, the number of buildings that we just had to turn away and uh, turn around and walk away from was staggering because uh, there was uh, no ramp to get into the building or the ramp was through the parking garage. Um, that the washrooms weren't accessible, any number of things that I found to be completely unacceptable, um, or they simply weren't there. The reality is that our country is not the most accessible, whether it's Toronto, Halifax, uh, Montreal, uh, name a city, 
the barriers to access for people with disabilities are significant. In terms of our Aboriginal and Indigenous peoples, the barriers may be physical, but they also may be societal, systemic, and psychological. We need to do a significantly better job of breaking down those barriers, of educating the average Canadian on the value of employing people from different communities. The value and the opportunity with connecting with people with disabilities, making sure that their workplaces are barrier free, or also connecting with Indigenous peoples and peoples from First Nations. The recommendations are great. I want to see my country grow. I'm a, a loyal Canadian, but let's make sure we take care of the people who are here before we continue to bring people in who are just going to exacerbate the problem. That's it for me. I hope you have a great day. Peace out.